Okay, I have a couple of phones here that I'm going to cover up, unfortunately. Okay, good morning. I want to first acknowledge that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Okanagan Nation. My name is Brad Haugley and I'm the District Commander for the RCMP Southeast District, which primarily encompasses the southern portion of British Columbia, overseeing nearly 1,300 employees in 45 different detachments, providing a service, popula service to a population base of 760,000. The last number of weeks have highlighted law enforcement in this country, most of which has not been positive. For me, this has initiated numerous conversations with my team, colleagues, many community stakeholders, and with my family and friends. This is why I'm here before you. I want you to know I've heard your concerns. High public confidence is what we strive for. And when we become aware of concerning behavior, we need to assure the public that we're taking the necessary steps to gather all the facts using legislative processes to make a determination on what occurred and to hold our members accountable. As soon as the video showing a portion of the UBCO student wellness check was shared with Kelowna Detachment Senior Management and I, we directed that a statutory and code of conduct investigation be mandated immediately. The statutory investigation has been made a priority and will be advanced to an external police agency for review, ensuring a professional and thorough investigation has been completed. Once this is complete, the investigative findings will be shared with Crown Council for their review and determination if a criminal charge should be advanced. We will provide an update when the investigative findings have been shared with Crown Council. The Code of Conduct investigation will be advanced to the appropriate conduct authority for a determination within our legislated conduct process. A part of the Code of Conduct process is to assess duty status of the subject member. And in this case, we made the decision, as guided by policy, to immediately remove the member from operational work and place into an administrative duty role. This is continually assessed. I have initiated the public complaint process so to ensure Ms. Moto Wang is provided the findings of our internal process and to also allow our internal process to be reviewed by the Civilian Review and Complaints Commission for the RCMP if she has concerns. Should be noted that the IO was not notified in this case given the disclosed injuries did not meet their threshold. I am aware that Ms. Mona Wang filed a civil statement of claim and that process continues before the courts. We as an organization need to also internally review the circumstances from a policy and training perspective. Currently, our division headquarters are reviewing our policies relating to mental health related calls which include requests to check well-being of a person. Given the UBCO case and other wellness check cases highlighted throughout this country, my team and I feel it is of the utmost importance to expand the best practice of police and crisis team program in Southeast District. Generally, mental health related calls for service for police in Southeast District are increasing. We are especially seeing an increase during the COVID-19 pandemic. Year 2016 recorded 11,929 occurrences and year 2019 recorded 15,099 occurrences. That is a 21% increase over a four year period. In the first five months of 2020, we have already experienced 6,446 occurrences and the month of May, recorded the highest number of occurrences ever recorded, totaling 1,456. For mental health apprehensions under the Provincial Mental Health Act, the statistics are similar. 2016 had a total of 2,220, and 2019 had a total of 2,568, an increase of 14%. 
There have already been 1,227 apprehensions in the first five months, with again the month of May recording the highest monthly number with 279. Currently, we only have two active police and crisis team programs, one in Kamloops and the other in Kelowna. I want to commend Interior Health and our detachments for creating the program, which has proven to be very effective in the response to mental health calls. De-escalating persons in crises and when treatment is necessary, easing the referral into the health care system to attain the best possible care. My goal is to greatly expand this needed service at existing locations, and it is not always available, and introduce it to as many communities as possible. I appreciate the commitment required by both Interior Health and us in the RCMP, but it is much needed. If there is an inability to provide a dedicated Interior Health nurse for every call, then I want to implement a real-time information sharing model that provides our members important health information that will ensure the wholesome assessment of the person in crises before attending the call. I want to build on a sustained corporate-based structure for all mental health related calls. I have personally advanced my willingness and strong support directly to the CEO and President of Interior Health, hoping we can quickly come together and begin working on a sustained model for Southeast District. I'm awaiting CEO Susan Brown's response. I continue to be proud of the profession I chose and I'm proud to be a member of the RCMP. I believe high public confidence and accountability is a key element for success in policing, no matter the color or stripe you wear. My team and I are, committing to, are committed to improving service delivery and to ensure public confidence and accountability and organizational transparency is observed. Always striving for high public trust. I want to thank chief and councils and local governments who have personally reached out to me and my senior management team, expressing their continuous support for the members policing their communities. It is very important that the public understand that those dedicated women and men of the RCMP continue to professionally uphold public safety in our communities, no matter how adverse the conditions are. I want to publicly recognize the exceptional work being done on a daily basis by those many dedicated professional Mounties who are servicing our communities 24-7, 365. Thank you. I will now take your questions. Chief Superintendent, will you be at liberty to offer us your personal reactions? You talked about seeing that video, you just watched it. What can you tell us about how you reacted as an individual? Well, I can tell you that when I first saw the video, deeply concerned, and I'm very sorry to Ms. Wang for what occurred. Um, if that was my family member or friend, I would have deep concerns and want answers as well. Who is conducting the review? Conducting, conducting the external review? Yes. It'll be uh, Abbotsford Police Department. How long is it expected to take? I am anticipating we will have a report to Crown completed and advanced to Crown Council by mid-July. And we'll provide an update to you when that is done. You know, in the last few months, we've seen the sexual assault. People have lost confidence in this one RCMP in the Southeast District because of public sexual assault for Hamill. We saw the video recently down uh, downtown, and we see this one. Like, what do you say to the people of Kelowna in this region right now? Well, my district has nearly 1,300 employees, and I can tell you that all employees are dedicated to the communities they serve and want to be the utmost of professional, providing that service to all of the people in Southeast District. Sir, when did you put the request in to Susan Brown for additional uh health nurses to work with your RCMP. How long ago was that and how would you characterize their response so far? I just put it in earlier this week. After the scene of the video. Yes. So it's recently. Been. Yes. How many more nurses do you think that program needs to operate in Kelowna? Personally, my vision would be that there would be a nurse accompanying every police officer to every mental health call. What that number looks like, uh, I can't tell you the specifics, but it is a high goal to achieve. And, but we need to get to the table and start working on that. Do you know how many of those calls there are? Like you mentioned some statistics. Uh, how many mental health calls would there be in a typical? So, as I said, for 2019, we had over 15,000. Can you give us an idea if there are any other? You know, we hear about Chad Vance, Sean Eklund, Brian Burkett, Kenneth Paul. 
call um, now Constable Peter Zach, Constable Browning. Are there and how many people are under code of conduct reviews right now? Well, I'm not prepared to give you that number, but I would ask that the public understand and appreciate that we have legislative processes that have been enacted as soon as we've come to learn on the behavior that has occurred. And through those legislative processes, we will determine on if there should be accountability ad advanced uh, as per the legislation that we have. And just to be clear, Council Brown is still on desk duty? Yes, she's on administrative duties at this time. What's the, why has that decision made, been made versus often they get suspended with pay? We are guided by our policies and legislation when we're making determination of duty status. How would you characterize the mood of the rank and file given recent events? Are they demoralized? Are they, are they angry or perhaps an increasing public perception they're not doing their job well? What do you hear from your members? Well, my members, in my view, are doing an exceptional job. There's a number of dedicated women and men that show up for work every day, even through the pandemic, when there were restrictions placed. And I would say that right now, they are concerned on the support from the public, but it is my job and all of our senior leaders to uphold the morale of our members and to ensure that they are provided the support required during this period of time that we're going through. Do you envision at the end of all this that the way that RCMP members are trained in general will change? Definitely there will be a review on how training is conducted overall. And I say that because that will include also with the COVID-19 pandemic that has obviously uh, impacted all of us. How long is the training at Depot for nurses? From six months. months. Six months, has that changed in any significant way in the last 10 years? The duration has not changed, but over time it has evolved, uh, taking into consideration various aspects uh, that have been identified going forward, such as, uh, diversity. Uh, it also has taken into consideration uh, our ability to uh, use force. So I would say since I've been at Depot 30 years ago, it has evolved much for the better. Well, why should law enforcement be involved in mental health interventions at all? It's not a matter of, of criminal justice. It's not a matter of policing. I would agree with you. I would say that mental health calls should and could be assessed by a mental health worker, trained mental health worker, and we would be a support mechanism if they felt there was jeopardy to themselves or others. So why would you call for more RCMP resources as opposed to resources to another governmental organization or another part of the health system? I would applaud in, an increase in mental health nurses for mental health related calls. I would like to see that. You mentioned the possibility of police having real-time access to a person's medical file, I suppose, so they'd have some more information about that person in the absence of additional nurses that accompany RCMP. Doesn't that raise a whole bunch of privacy issues about police having access to an individual person's medical history when they show up on their doorstep? What's most important is ensuring that that person in crisis gets the help they deserve and the response provided accordingly. How would that help? I don't have the full facts as of yet, what occurred when the call came in to what occurred in the apartment of Ms. Wang. Um, but I would say that if we had our PAC team there, that situation may have been differently. Once you see, I understand that initially it wasn't reported to the IIO because it didn't meet the bar for the IIO, but then when you watch the actual video and you see the aftermath of her injury, do you not think that that decision should be reevaluated? The injuries have been, we interviewed Ms. Wang as late as Tuesday. And there's no evidence still that shows that we need to advance this to the IAO for their notification. Can you respond to the uh, petition going around that already has 340,000 signatures suggesting that the constable involved should be not just suspended or put on desk duty, but terminated? I appreciate the concerns from not only the petition, but I've uh, also seen the concerns from the UBC president, concerns from the mayor here in Kelowna, and concerns from a number of individuals through email and phone to the detachment. 
I want to reassure that we are doing everything we can to make it a priority within the legis legislative processes that we have that accountability will be advanced as appropriate. Would you uh, think that body cameras would help or hinder in a scenario like this? So body cameras, uh, again, anything to improve the transparency, I'm open to. It's a conversation of cost, a significant cost and impact to any police department, including the RCMP. Um, so, you know, those are conversations I hope are, are occurring and will continue to occur. Um, again, anything that we can increase transparency, I'm open to. What would you say to the public that's just reticent now with calling law enforcement for what might be considered a mental health issue or a minor matter, or even, frankly, minor crimes, because they don't feel police will do the job that they expect? Well, I would say your characterization of the public is fairly broad. Uh, there's likely individuals, but I would say the majority of the public still feel confident and safe with the police force of jurisdiction for their community. Yes. How much of that is um, training and dealing with mental health issues? Good question. I do not have that in hand. I can tell you that we, serving members, every three years uh, go through a crisis de-escalation uh, course online and then we go through practical scenarios at our Pacific Region Training Center. aware of the surveillance video a few days before you actually made the decision to um, put Constable Browning on desk duty. Like, can you speak to the lapse in time there? Even, I think I got a response from RCMP the, the morning before and then after the story started to get traction by three o'clock in the afternoon, um, there had been a decision made to put her on desk duty. So can you talk to the lapse in timeline? I can tell you that the civil statement of claim, written civil statement of claim, to the video that's uh, in question provides a completely different picture. And that as soon as the video was disclosed and observed by Kelowna Senior Management myself, we initiated the processes as I described. And so you didn't see the video right away when it was initially released by the courts? I did not see the video right away when it was initially released by the courts. The uh, task team, um, how many members are on so it all depends. So in Kelowna, we have one member, and in Kamloops, we have one member. So capacity is obviously an issue, uh, and I want to increase that capacity so we have more nurses and more members to attend to these calls. What kind of training are they getting um, to be on the task team versus the uh, frontline duty officer? So they're working with the nurse that they are assigned in de-escalation techniques on a constant basis. There's no formalized training that I know of for that specific program. And what are the approximate hours they're working right now? It all depends, it fluctuates, it varies. So when you can appreciate leave and training and you only have uh, one nurse, one member, it's, it's difficult and challenging to cover 24-7, 365. So it fluctuates. But it's not a nine to five? It's nine to nine to five. We need to, that is fluctuated, I can tell you that. We've had more and less depending on the capacity. Yes. Can you speak to the prior investigation that took place for Constable CD, uh, uh, Richard Zach uh, on the Nathan Strader, the incident that happened prior to that, and you looked into it, but there was no disciplinary action against him since the second incident? Two points with that one. I have looked into it, and uh, if you would read in the LOD that we reached out to the complainant hoping that he would provide a statement, which he did not, and also that that complainant has the ability under the CRCC to have that, his complaint reviewed and determine if we made the right decision or not.
two things. First, it is important to ensure that the public have the trust of their police force. Second, to ensure that our members know, my members know, that their leadership is recognizing the dedication that they provide 24-7, 365. Given the cover-ups that have happened at this district over the past few years, how do we uh, have confidence in your ability and in the ability of Kona Detachment to move forward transparently with full accountability from management, not from the rank of file, but from management? I can tell you that transparency and accountability continue to be the high-level piece for this district. Will you release the report publicly then? Report which report? The, the review, the independent review, will you, will you release that publicly? Same report they released to the press? Same repeat, well we've got to appreciate the criminal process. So they'll go to Crown Council and they will have to make a decision on if they're going to approve a criminal charge or not. Depending on what Crown Council does, It'll be dependent upon what we do. If you want to reinstill public confidence, why does it take a week or two weeks for you guys to come in front of the cameras? Why can't you respond on the day of when we ask you for comments? Very good question. And for me, I felt this time it was important for me to come and speak to all of you. But why the delay? Why couldn't you do it a week ago? Because I wanted to also bring forward our statistics and my vision of expanding the PAC program throughout Southeast District. Okay, does anyone have any individual stand-ups they wish to have? Michael Jepassia, how long have you had this position currently as the Chief Superintendent? Five. Five years? Five years. How many news conferences? Two or three. So only when it's something of high importance. Highest importance to me, exactly. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Somebody left their phone here. Thanks.